On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what uh, Guan, a blessed and wonderful Wednesday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So, watch your snow, my peeps. Uh, in the morning, we're going to kick it off with some international stories coming out of Sacramento in California. Really, really funny, but definitely really, really very serious. Now, I'm going to play a video footage for you of two men who stole two boxes. The boxes are said to be laden with vegetable matter resembling the good old sensemania. Yeah, man. Now it is said that the boxes were slated to be delivered but two criminal elements stole the boxes. The boxes you don't know say once you send off a package in America you can track your shipment. So of course the boxes had on the trackers. The boxes were tracked and it led them to a home Occupied by Jamaicans. Yeah, man. Now on your screen, watch. Can I pause it? No. See, I'm going to take up your box there. Look at it. And he took the other box that was on top. He knew exactly which box Look. to take. That's the guy who said, oh, we don't need a ship anymore. Then they run to the car. Mm. And the world's just like, what? You Yo. can't just leave like that. You, where are you? Where are you? How are you? How are you? Now, this story on the spot news media will most definitely be doing some digging to further unearth the criminal network. Now, any one of you regular members of Chan Public out there, yard or abroad, notice. Any one of the faces that was posted in that video, please link on the spot news media. <laughs> yeah, man. Now back to local style. Now the first thing that we are going to talk about, we are going to give you know, an update. Where a man from in a Portland, they end up losing three pints a few days, well, a few weeks ago. And eight men were caught by the police. Now the police have officially charged the eight criminal elements. Now the Portland Police Division have charged eight people in relation to the fatal knockings and clappings of a man at his home in Bamboo Tree Lane in Fairy Hill District in the parish on August 7. The police stated that they have followed weeks of intense investigation. Three of the eight have officially been charged with murder. The three are listed as 31-year-old Shane Phillips, otherwise known as Taliban. A 19-year-old identified as Dominique Perkins, but more popularly known in the criminal underworld as Kente, an 18-year-old, has also been charged with murder. He has since been identified as Raheem Dixon, 
but more popularly known in the criminal underworld as Squidly. They are all from St. Andrew and a few from St. Catherine addresses. Now, meanwhile, the additional five, including a teenage boy, are charged with conspiracy to the murder. So watch this now. They have since been identified as 30-year-old taxi operator Xavier Carty, 21-year-old so-called landscaper Chad Hilton, 19-year-old so-called blackmaker Fabian McIntosh, and 19-year-old Kavan Jacobs, a 17-year-old boy of a Manninsville Road address in Kingston, 8. Now we really go on with the brother. He's presently on your screen. Detectives stated that sometime around 11.45 a.m., basically, middle day that, 12 o'clock almost, this 50-year-old man presently on your screen identified as Orlando Loden was at his home when two armed criminal elements with handguns pounced upon him and caught him up several times, leaving him lifeless. The men attempted to escape, but the quick response of the Portland police saw three vehicles being intercepted on the Paisley Main Road in the parish shortly after the incident took place. The occupants of the vehicle were all arrested and the investigators continued their probe. Two firearms were reportedly seized when the investigators carried out systematic searches of the motor vehicles in the days following the incident. Charges of the fatal knockings and clappings and conspiracy to the fatal knockings and clappings were subsequently laid against the eight men after detectives completed their lines of inquiry and conducted interviews with the men. Their court date is now being finalized. Yeah, man. So another decent spot of work again by the squad of them. Now another update. A man end up losing three pints from injuries received during a knockings and clappings involving an off-duty police officer over there in the New Green area, New Acres Drive in Mandeville, Manchester. On Sunday, he has since been identified as Hopeton Brian, a 40-year-old labor said to be from a Somerset address in the parish. Now, the official police report would suggest that sometime around 12 a.m. in the wee hours of the morning, the police officer was at his home when he heard his dog barking. It is said that he went outside to investigate. The lawman stated that he saw two men, one of whom was armed with a firearm and pointed the said firearm at him. The policeman then discharged one round from his service pistol in the direction of the men. The police stated that they were alerted by the off-duty cop and upon their arrival, Mr. Brian was seen laying on the ground with a one can of wound to his neck. The matter was, however, reported to the Independent Commission of Investigations for their probe. Now we're going to talk about holy panakins and clappings them. We're going right across Jamaica. But before we get into that, yesterday I spoke about a knockings and clappings of Guan in the Iron River. So let me give you a quick rundown on that one. Now the St. Andrew Dart police are probing the fatal knockings and clappings of a taxi operator in Iron River in St. Andrew on Monday night. The deceased man has since been identified as 41-year-old Gregory Francis, otherwise known as Greg of Iron River. It is reported that sometime around 8.40 p.m., residents heard loud explosions and summoned the police. Upon the arrival of the police, Greg, that is Gregory Francis, a.k.a. Greg, his body was found slumped over the driver's seat of his Toyota Probox motor car. No motive has since been established for his loss of life. Now, a whole heap of things we notice here go on in and around the General Kansan Springs, Stony Hill, 
all of that here and there since the other day. And it is most definitely worrying. So on the spot news media most definitely I got picture a small tent up there to figure out what really are going and why so many lives are being taken. <laughs> yeah man. So anyway, make we continue. So watch this now my peeps. Another mass shooting took place last night. This time in a community known as Bronzal. Back pasture in a bronze hall in the St. Catherine North Police Division. Eight people get caught up. One out of the eight end up lose in three pints. Now the thing about this mass knockings and clappings again. It took place at the wake of one of our entertainers, grandmother. We are talking about Christopher Martin. Christopher Martin lost his grandmother, kept awake, and the mass knockings and clappings took place. Blatant disrespect to the entertainer. Blatant disrespect to his grandmother that had passed. And a blatant disrespect to the family and friends. But this just goes to show where the mindset of Jamaican criminal elements are and the lengths they would go to disrupt even a setup. The thing definitely don't look good. The thing really, really rough. I'm not for sure if we are not seeing that these criminal elements are out of control. I'm not for sure if the artists them see say the music need for change. Them not understand that it is not a one person thing. It is a all our thing for change the mindset of these youths and when me don't speak about the atrocities that unfolded last night I go play a video a prison video a recording done by a prisoner and when you see all of what that I will be showing it just makes me wonder why these young men continue to do the very thing that will either land them six feet under or 35 to life in that hell hole called prison. Now that took place at that wake for Christopher Martin's grandmother. Now in the St. Andrew North Police Division, a fatal knockings and clappings took place along Blue Mountain Road. And on the spot news media will be expounding on that in subsequent newscast where the life of a man identified as Marlon Newsome, 26 years old, was taken. He said to be a welder of Blue Mountain Road in Red Hills, St. Andrew. He was taken out in a hail of bullets by unknown assailants. His body was found along the roadway. Reports are that citizens heard loud explosions and some of the police who on arrival saw the body of the now deceased in a pool of red substance leaking from his body from the whole heap of condom where him get that riddled his body leaving him lifeless. Now the next fatality go on in the St. Andrew South Police Division along Henley Lane in Olympic Gardens, where an unidentified male was canned up, his life taken along the roadway by unknown assailants. The last, but most definitely not the least, of fatalities took place in the western section of the island, the Hanover Police Division, in the Ramble community, Burnt Grum recorded that fatality. The man in question has since been identified as Bruce Garden, 
39 years old. It is said that he is a contractor of Shortwood in Cambridge, St. James. He was taken out in a hail of bullets at a bar by unknown assailants. The Rumble police is presently investigating. Yeah, man. Now we have a few criminal elements who are deemed wanted by the Jamaica Constabulary Force. And the first person on that list is this criminal element presently on your screen identified as Dante Allen but more popularly known in the criminal underworld as freelance. Now, this criminal element here is wanted for fatal knockings and clappings of some people. He frequents Catherine Hall, Albion Lane, Greenpan, and North Lane, all of which is in the parish of St. James. This next criminal element here, presently on your screen, identified as Junior Brown, is most definitely not a stranger to this platform as he has been posted on this platform quite a few times. He has still not been found. The next criminal element presently on your screen identified as Gregory Ferguson aka Ruff is also a man that has been featured on this platform for quite some time. He's still at large and he's wanted for a fatal knockings and clappings. This next criminal element here is one of the same, Dean Morgan, otherwise known as Max, wanted for fatal knockings and clappings. He frequents the Berwick district. He frequents Riversdale, all of which is in St. Catherine. Now, these criminal elements are wanted by the police. So anyone having any information surrounding the whereabouts of these criminal elements, please alert the nearest police station. And as always, if you not trust the police, link on the Spot News Media or any like-minded vlogger. Give us the information and we will most definitely pass it on to the relevant authorities who can make effective change. Now, the last thing that we are going to talk about is a fatal knockings and clappings that took place in the community of Grand Spen in the St. Andrew North Police Division sometime between Thursday night and Friday morning of last week. The person that end up lose Fim Tree Pines is presently on your screen and he has since been identified as Cruz Modi. Maybe I got the first name wrong. But Cruz Modi is what I got. Now he originated from Mobile St. James. But was living in the Grand Spain community for quite some time. His life was taken. And some names are being called. Now I'm not for sure the personality of the deceased. So on the spot news media will most definitely be making some checks to see if we can unearth the personality of the deceased. And also to check out the Nakis and Klapis whose name is being called on his fatal Nakins and Klappins. And see if we can tie in everything together. If you make it make sense. <laughs> yeah man. So anyway, my peeps, remember if you like, share, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscasts. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.